It was only a couple of weeks ago now that I documented, tested and installed a lithium cranking battery into the Land Cruiser 200 series. So the AGM is back in the vehicle and the lithium is out for now. So what went wrong? So this video is not designed to be a clickbait titled video and I will state straight up that there's nothing wrong with this battery. It still works exactly as tested in my last review and it hasn't caused any damage to the Land Cruiser 200 series. The issue I had was in relation to the charging system which seems to be quite a popular setup amongst four wheel drivers and something you definitely want to consider if you're looking at getting one of these lithium cranking batteries. So what was the issue then? Well after running this twin lithium setup I observed that the starter battery was running at a lower voltage than that of the auxiliary battery. In addition to that, the auxiliary battery was remaining at a very high state of charge, even while running things like the 12 volt fridge and charging devices. So I left the vehicle in the garage for a few days without any solar or AC input to see how the batteries reacted and to see how they discharged. And this is when I realized that there was a bit of an issue. My cranking battery went all the way down to 10.3 volts, while the auxiliary battery here remained almost fully charged at 13.4 volts. And this is exactly the opposite of what I wanted to see. So initially I couldn't figure it out. How was the cranking battery so low, but the auxiliary battery almost at full state of charge even with those appliances running? So this brought me to have a look at the Redarc BCDC1240 that I've got mounted in the Land Cruiser to manage the battery's state of charge. And I can look at this and monitor this through the Victron BMV712 app or through the battery monitor on the rear of the vehicle to see what's going on. And what I noticed is that yes, all the devices and appliances were being run and powered from the auxiliary battery. However, what I did notice is that every few seconds, the BCDC would turn on and just top that auxiliary battery up by adding a small amount of current. Now it would only last a few seconds, but it would be enough just to top up that current. And what essentially was happening was the Red Arc was prioritizing the state of charge of the auxiliary battery over that of the cranking. Now I had to figure out why the Red Arc at BCDC was behaving like it was, but first I had to understand exactly what its primary function was and how it works to achieve this. The Red Arc at BCDC system is simply a battery charger. The BCDC stands for Battery Charger Direct Current and essentially charges an auxiliary battery system using an existing direct current, also known as the starting battery. Now the numbers on my unit, being the 1240, establish that this unit is designed to charge a 12 volt system at a maximum current of 40 amps. What the Red Arc battery management system is not though, it is not an isolator. It is simply a battery charger and it uses voltage readouts from the cranking battery to determine when to start and when to stop charging their auxiliary battery system. So let's have a look at some of the documentation from Red Arc to see exactly when this occurs and how it determines this. Scrolling through the Red Arc's information and settings, we come to a page labeled Turn On Off Thresholds. This page provides information that determines when this unit will provide charge to the auxiliary battery and when it will stop to protect the state of charge of the cranking battery. Now in our case, we are looking at the 12 volt applications and more specifically the standard settings. Under the heading Input Open Circuit Low Voltage Conditions, we note that our unit is designed to turn on at any voltage above 13.2 and turn off at any voltage below 12.7. What this means is that the Red Arc system is going to provide charge to the auxiliary battery whenever the voltage in the cranking battery is above 13.2 and it's going to stop providing that charge whenever the voltage in the cranking battery is below 12.7. What we can also see here from the documentation is that the Red Arc system conducts a battery voltage test every 100 seconds to make sure it's got the correct cranking battery voltage. So here you might be able to see the issue. If you've watched my initial cranking battery video on the lithium, you'll know that the lithium holds its voltage much higher than 12.7 volts for a much longer period of time when compared with that of the AGM. The Red Arc unit is designed for more traditional batteries like that of the AGM, where the voltage is going to drop to 12.7 almost as soon as the engine is switched off and therefore protect the capacity within that starter battery. But as we know, the voltage discharge profiles of that of a lithium and an AGM battery are vastly different, and this is going to hold that voltage for a much longer period of time. The Red Arc system is not able to determine what type of battery is providing the input charge, just measuring that voltage, which is going to appear as if the lithium is a running engine and therefore safe to charge that auxiliary battery. And this is exactly what we see in my circumstance. If you've watched my lithium auxiliary battery video, you'll note that we have set the Red Arc BC-DC unit to a lithium charge profile, which will charge the auxiliary battery at 14.5 volt until fully charged, and then hold it at a float voltage of about 13.6 volt. 
So as my accessories and appliances are drawing down the current on the auxiliary battery, the Red Arc is essentially topping that voltage back up to the 13.6 volt float using the power from the lithium cranking battery. So this begs two questions. Firstly, why did setting the Red Arc BC-DC to a lithium charging profile not prevent this from occurring? And why did that cranking battery discharge all the way down to 10.3 volt rather than isolating at that 12.7 volt? To start, if we've set the Red Arc system to a lithium profile charge, then how come it hasn't adjusted the parameters to suit these higher voltages? And that is simply because this is a battery charger and those profiles relate to the charging of the auxiliary battery. The Red Arc unit has four profiles being A, B, C and Li, and each of these have differing maximum and float voltages to maximise the efficiency of the charge that's provided to the auxiliary battery. It does not take into consideration the input voltages from that of the cranking battery. Secondly, why did my lithium battery drop all the way down to 10.3 volt rather than isolating at 12.7? Looking at the capacity testing of this lithium unit, a voltage of 12.7 represents a 35 hour amp draw, which is more than half the capacity of that cranking battery. Given that the Red Arc could determine 12.7 volt at anything above 12.65, we can see here that we could have lost up to 39 amp hours by charging the auxiliary system before the Red Arc has stopped sending charge across from that cranking battery. Those who have seen my video on some of the issues I've had with the Land Cruiser 200 series while modifying it may be aware that this vehicle does have a standby power draw of 0.023 amps. Now although it's not much, it does add up over time if the vehicle is for sitting for days on end. We can see that the difference between 12.65 volt and 10.3 volt is only 19 amp hours, which would only take 82 hours or 3.5 days to draw down without an external or alternator charge. So effectively, I'm losing seven days worth of standby power when the unit and batteries are acting like this, which is just simply not sustainable. So it begs the question, is there something I can put in place to stop this from happening and to continue using the lithium cranking battery? And I've come up with two options or two solutions that we may be able to put in place to prevent this. The first solution is to isolate the cranking battery from the Red Arc BC-DC unit while the vehicle is off. And this is where I was very impressed by Red Arc's customer service. I made a phone call to Red Arc's technical advice line and was answered within 60 seconds and that same person who answered was able to provide me an answer within two minutes of that phone call. Something I definitely wasn't expecting and was very impressive. So what I was advised to do was to fit a 50 amp heavy duty relay in between the cranking battery and the Red Arc system that would be triggered by the vehicle's ignition. Essentially once the vehicle is switched off that wire is disconnected and therefore the Red Arc won't provide or won't pick up any voltage and won't be able to charge the auxiliary battery using this cranking battery. Once the ignition is restarted, the Red Arc will then pick up the voltage from the cranking battery and charging will resume as normal. I also contacted iTech World directly to see whether they had any solutions as I'm sure there would have been previous customers before me with a similar type of issue running a similar type of system. They got back to me very quickly and provided a recommendation for a Victron Smart Connect product, which essentially is a similar thing to a relay, however being a programmable unit that would disconnect that vehicle line from the cranking battery to the Red Arc system at a pre-programmed voltage. And that's the advantage of a system like the Victron product, would be that you'll be able to manually program what voltage you want this battery to disconnect from the Red Arc system. Overall, I was very impressed with both companies, both from iTech World and from Red Arc, with the ability to very quickly and efficiently give me a solution that would work for my particular setup. So I'm yet to have either of these solutions fitted to the cruiser and hence why the AGM battery is still sitting in the cruiser as the primary cranking battery. However, I am leaning towards the 50 amp heavy duty relay as suggested by Red Arc. I'm happy for the BCDC unit to be isolated once the vehicle switched off and it should come in at a lower cost as well. But I'll make sure to keep you updated on our social media pages to whichever way we end up going and how it ends up performing. There you have it guys, that is a bit of an update on the lithium cranking battery, although out of the vehicle for now, hopefully it won't be for much longer. Now today I have talked about the Red Arc BC-DC system quite a bit, however I should note that there are a lot of DC-DC chargers, regardless of the brand, out on the market these days that act in a very similar fashion. So if you have already a dual battery system or you're looking at putting a dual battery system into your vehicle and considering the lithium cranking setup, then have a look at the specifications of those chargers and consider adding the relay or even the Victor battery smart connect into your system in the first instance to prevent these types of issues. Now with the recent implementation of these lithium cranking batteries I'm sure it's only a matter of time before other manufacturers jump on board with programmable or switchable voltage input levels but in the time being this is what we're going to have to live with. 
But guys, I hope you found the video interesting and I hope it gave you a bit of an update as to some of the findings that I found at once installing both of these lithium batteries into the cruiser. And as always, thanks for watching to the end. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Thank you.